Okay. All right. Um, so my name is Julian. So I've volunteered for quite a few uh, mentorship programs recently, and I've got a few. Uh, recurring questions or a few similar questions so I decided to lump them together and um, do this presentation so to speak so we, we know what DevOps is yeah uh, but for most uh, junior developers may not uh, fully understand why they should care about ops why you know shouldn't they just concentrate on dev and just code and nothing else right but I think is that it doesn't work that way, right? Why we, why a lot of companies really focus so much on DevOps? Because we need alignment. We need everybody to be working for the same goals. We need uh, everything to run consistently, run smoothly. Uh, everybody actually knowing that uh, the the goal, the customer requirements, business requirements, whatnot, right? If we don't, if we don't understand how other teams work, how other departments work. We can't make sure that we actually work together. Okay, so let's take a look. What do we consider devs? What do we consider ops, right? There's plenty of job descriptions out there, plenty of titles out there, you know. It doesn't really matter what, your t what title you end up getting, right? It really quite insignificant why or whatever it is. We will do similar jobs. Right, there might be you know some specializations here and there, but just there's just so many. It doesn't really matter what in the end of the day you end up doing. But we do need to understand that we need all of these to have a business. Right, just being a developer, you don't end up with a business. There's no such thing. You need to understand what the business is and how to understand what is a business. You need to understand your users or your customers. Right? They might be one and the same, they might be separate. And that's why you have your ops. Whether you are delivering, whether you are marketing, sales, whatever, doesn't matter. And all of us need to have the same goals. All of us need to understand what the user wants. Right. So how do we do this? Right? All these DevOps, whether you're in an agile process, well, what we care about in agile, right? because uh, everybody is a developer in Agile. We don't make a distinction whether or not you're a data analyst, whether you're a business analyst, we don't really care. Uh, um, office politics is, I find in my experience, is also very important. So these are things that we might not have considered when we go into uh, the job market. But once you spend a couple of years in there, you do notice that, yeah, you do have to care about office politics. And you have to care about the product growth. Okay, so these are some of the things that uh, you may not realize if you just, you know, dig your head down and face the computer every day. So these are the. Initially, I put PM in front, but not always, right? It's not always the product manager or the the project manager that cares about this. But so typically, what happens is that you get a uh, business requirements come in, right? So you have your project manager or your product owner come in and the thing is that the first thing that goes through well not the first thing but uh, the majority of uh, their decision making when they come up with a project plan is these three things the scope the cost and the time so this is what they call the trivial constraint right so if you sacrifice on scope that means that you can, uh, you get more you can get more out of your cost or more out of your time and so forth and vice versa, so to speak, right? So it's quite simple. And so typically what happens is that they'll come in, they'll ask you, oh, please give me an estimation. And these are the things that they will consider. Then you would start to negotiate, you start to communicate with your PM. You start to uh, tell them, oh, if you want this, all these requirements, then you start to clarify the requirements, you know, does it include X, Y, Z? You know, can we just do uh, X and forget about Y? And then you give them an estimate. Right. Um, these are all the different external drivers that comes in. You know, this is internal, actually. This is pretty much internal. You consider what does it cost the company? Uh, what sort of time you need to deliver? 
the scope, basically the resources you need, you know, how many uh, developers would I take the time off, uh, the QAs that I would need for this project, and so on and so forth. And these are the external dri drivers. You need to consider what the customer re needs, what the customer wants. Does the customer care more about quality, care more about speed? What are the operations costs involved? Whether do you need to do a large marketing or you can ship it uh, easily, cheaply? The profit, mar profit margins are the, uh, the uh, big uh, concern, obviously, for any business. Uh, the competition. What are your partner's concerns? You know? All these are external drivers to any business. And all this also affects your software because it uh, depends on the dis business, the percentage of the software uh, involved can vary. And basically, the profits allowed, well, the profit, the costs uh, for your department, your budget for your department comes from all these. Okay, uh, so one of the things uh, that is a good tool to basically use is um, when you discuss these things with your PM, whether it's your PM, your software manager, and so on. We discuss this thing, uh, doing story user story mapping. So the reason why we, okay, so there's this under term called scope creep. Scope creep comes in when basically you look at the business requirements, you do your estimation, and you basically typically what happens when uh, when it comes to scope creep is that you did not uh, factor in a particular requirement. You did not factor in uh, that you know, or you need to uh, create a database for this, something like that, right? So and then after you start the project, then we realize, oh no, you know, we still need this. We didn't, we didn't clarify on this uh, requirement. And sometimes uh, your PM might be able to negotiate a change request. That means a bit more money from the customer or time, uh, extra time from the customer. If not, then this code creep basically become part of your requirement and you have to rush it through. Right? To be able to, uh, to minimize this code creep basically means that you want to be able to uh, flush out all the requirements, you know, flush out everything that comes from your business requirements. Yeah? Flush out everything that your customer actually wants. So you do this user story mapping with your customer usually. So this is a tool for you to communicate with your customer. When you go through, you, you communicate with them, whether it's your customer or your product owner. You do this uh, user story mapping to basically flush out what are the type of things that are required. What exactly does the customer want? What exactly does the user actually need? What would they use? So I prepared here a couple of, let's see. So this is just one of the open source project that we played with, right? So basically I just uh, very quickly just flush out, okay. So we have our users, what are the users? Then we have our user stories. We just, I'll just create the user stories. I just list down what are user stories of uh, doing a split build. And then I prepare the uh, technical stories based on the user stories. So very simply, and this is not something that you should be doing by yourself, right? When you're, you're doing these things by yourself, uh, basically, there's always blind spots. There's always things that you have not considered. That's why we do brainstorming. And so, so we write this all out on post-it notes usually. We don't do this online. So it's very good if it's everybody is in the same room. You do this on post-it notes so that you can actually move all these cards around. Right? So similarly, the, the blue ones are the user stories. The pink ones, purple ones, or pink ones are the technical stories, so to speak. So you line them up. You know, These are simple ways that you can easily tell if it's because we read English from left to right. So you can easily tell the sequence of what is going on. So you have your user stories, and then as soon as somebody feel, hey, we haven't considered this, write it in another post-it note, stick it on, right? Move the cards around. Similarly, if somebody has considered, hey, we haven't considered this particular technical bit that we might need. So just move it around, move the cards around. So this is what we do, user story mapping. 
Okay, so other types of things that you might not know. Okay, so sorry I'm, if I'm a bit jumping around. If you have any questions at any point in time, raise your hands if you are unsure of why I'm talking about something. So these, all these are tools and processes that I've explained and basically a couple of things that uh, the upside of uh, of a business might use uh, the common terminologies that the things that they do that affects us as developers. Okay, so churning is basically customer churn is the percentage of customer that is swapped out basically when when customers switch to a different, uh, let's say telco for example, right? Whether it's a telco or a different network, whether it's a TV network, your credit cards, all these, you know. Customer training. So for most business, uh, customer training is a big point in terms of your user base. And user base that translates to your profits, right? So this is also one of the tool sets that is one of the processes that they try to understand what is going on with their customers. So you map out a customer journey. So how do we do that? First thing you look at the input uh, the what do you call it the entry point of a customer. So, the the first uh, first awareness of the customer, the first time the customer come across your brand. So okay, so awareness, the interest. How does the customer know about us? Very easily, you know, a lot of surveys you ask. Oh, how do you know about us? Right. This is why, and this is where they map. So from which which platform it is. Which channel did they know about uh, the brand, the perception of the brand, the risk, opportunities, and then it comes to a decision agreement. Basically, you look at it. If a look at the brand often enough, if you are happy about the brand, you know your perception of the brand is good enough, then you agree to buy in. Right? The service delivery. How how is the customers? Uh, uh, feedback in terms of the service delivery. How many stars do they give you? Delivery feedback. So co companies, banks, whatever companies or, or any uh, business at all, right? They pay a lot of attention in here, right? Delivery the feedback. So banks also, not just banks, any companies, they spend actually a lot of money going through customer feedback. And this year, this is where all your data science, machine learning all comes in already, right? Because you're scraping, you're, you're going through text analysis of your own customer's feedback. Or even Twitter, uh, Twitter, uh, what do you call that? Uh, analysis of your, 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 yes, yes, your Twitter impressions, you know, all this comes in. You know, we spend so much money on machine learning just to understand customer behavior. So this, all this all uh, basically boils down to customer behavior. How do companies understand their own user behavior? And relationship strengthening. And basically they spend some of the, the companies, they spend months, tons of money basically to, to come up with, uh, at the end, a uh, uh, business analyst report, for example. And all this comes down to once they have a report, then they start a project. And then when the project roll down to software or data scientists or whatever, right? So by understanding these sort of processes that how the business work and how the DevOps actually operate, it also helps us understand that yeah, we need to be able to align ourselves, that this is where the business requirements come in. And this is how we can uh, help them understand what is required in terms of the technical aspects. So there are different other ways to measure what are the customer satisfaction, right? There's always the ways that do these um, feedback forms, uh, customer chat groups, focus groups, customer forums, ratings. These are just different ways to measure uh, customer satisfaction and depending on what your your uh, business analyst comes up with the and whatever uh, 
suggestions comes out of uh, whoever who's uh, consulting with the business, then you get different type of projects. Okay, so pivoting is when a company makes a fundamental change to the product, to the business. And the thing is that if a company doesn't pivot, most likely it basically in this time of day where technology changes so fast, right, where customers, users are so fickle-minded, right? Today is this fad, tomorrow is another one. So the companies need to pivot a lot of their business just to keep up with the changes in society. So and that, what that means for our company product, your company product will change. So the key point here is that don't be surprised when uh, your project changes because that is actually very, very common and that's how your company can survive. Uh, this is what we call wireframing. So for any new product, first thing you do, you don't dive in and code straight away. That is the worst thing you can actually do. Design first, you know, plan first, do your research first. So this is one of the first steps mostly for uh, not just for UI, but because, because um, yeah, typically wireframing comes in for UI UX, right? So you, you draw this out on paper first because it's just faster, easier to uh, see what exactly that is required for any project. This is what we call by wireframing. So you can actually put, it, put your UI on the available space. And basically, you can showcase to whether your project manager or your software manager, your team leader, uh, this is what you understand what the user uh, will be doing. So this actually maps out all the different functionalities the user will be going through. And of course, after that, you have to, this is just very, very high level, top level. After that, you have to also design what comes, uh, the, the missing parts, right? They see all the missing parts. So these are different types of UML diagrams available. So UML is not a new term. So been there for about 20, 30 years, I guess. So all UML, I think there's, uh, right now there's 13 or 14, sorry. So there's about 13 or 14 types of, uh, last slide there, don't worry, last slide. Uh, there's about 13 or 14 types of UML diagrams. So do a quick study of these diagrams. So all the different UML diagrams actually uh, portray a different segment, basically, of your entire software system. And why, why do I emphasize on this so much? These are the ways you can communicate to your product owner what you are doing, what is actually involved in your software. Because without all this, how are you going to communicate your software to your product owner? These are the two sets we can use, we can utilize to do that. And basically, in Agile or any DevOps uh, situation, one of the key things that we always, always focus on is communication. So when I came out of uni, it's like seriously, I had no problems with the technical parts. I have absolute confidence in myself in terms of technical parts. The one that I'm not actually confident in is this, you know, the, the communications part, the office politics part, right? These are the things that, you know, you, you don't learn in school. You basically have to go into the workforce, figure it out yourself. And basically, these are the things that I have just touched on. It's just the tip of the iceberg. There's plenty, plenty more. Everybody will end up finding their own ways of how to communicate. But just make sure that you, you uh, give it this due diligence. Don't forget that communication is very important. Um, don't just bury yourself you know, in front of your computer and code away. So, no software is done by just one person. Yeah, any successful software that I've come across, all done by teams and teams of people, whether it's past, present, or now, right? And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? Or do